So we've seen the code work and we've seen how to write the server. We've seen that we have a working client, but we haven't yet seen how to write that client. So this is a Java class rather than, rather than a JavaScript class. However, I still think it's important that you see how to write the client to get a better, better understanding of exactly how these two communicate. So what we have here is a file called echo.js. In that file, we create an echo namespace. And in that namespace, we are going to add an initialize function. And it's this function that's going to set up the connection between the client and the server and allow us to communicate between the client and the server. So the initialize function will look something like this. We'll say echo dot initialize equals function. Then in here, we'll establish the connection to the server. So in here, the first thing we need is an endpoint. So we say var ep, and this is the string of websocket slash echo a. This is the endpoint we ended up with previously. Once we have that endpoint, we can then connect to the server. We first need to establish whether we're using HTTP or HTTPS. So a simple check will give us that. So something like if window.location.protocol uh, equals HTTP, we know we're talking to an HTTP endpoint. Otherwise, we'll assume we're talking to an, H an HTTPS endpoint. If we're talking to an HTTP endpoint, we need to create a WS connection. If we're talking to an HTTPS endpoint, we need to create a WSS connection. To do that, we provide another method on the echo class called connect. So we'll have echo.connect equals function. And inside that function, we'll manage the connection. This function will take a single parameter which is the host that we are connecting to. This will be the full URL of that host. So from inside the code here, we'll call echo.connect. We'll pass this either the WS protocol or the WSS protocol. So this will either be WS colon slash slash plus window dot location dot host plus the endpoint or it'll be WSS plus that endpoint. Inside the connect function, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we have to do is establish whether or not we, we support WebSockets. This is code we saw earlier in the introduction. It's code that looks like this. So if the browser supports WebSocket, then use WebSocket and pass it the host address. If it's an older browser and it supports Moz WebSocket, so from Firefox, for example, and create a new Moz WebSocket. Otherwise, otherwise, we'll just log out an error saying we don't support WebSockets inside the browser. Notice that we're adding socket as a parameter onto this echo class here. Once we've established the connection, we then need to add handlers. And there are three events that we care about, open, close, and message. So each of these will be, will be a function. We'll have We'll have echo.socket dot on open equals function. Then the same for close. So we'll make this on we'll make this on close. We'll make this on message. So inside the on open function. We can simply initially just log out the fact that we've opened the connection. So say something like info connection opened. Once we've opened the connection, we'll add a DOM event handler such that if the user hits the enter key, we want to send the message to the server. That code is something like this. So simply wire up a key down event if the key code is 13, that's the enter key, then call echo.send message. We haven't implemented this method yet. We'll put a placeholder in for that now. We can implement that in a moment. If 
for the close message, we'll simply log a message to the console saying the connection has been closed. So remember the close message comes from the server. It's the, it's the, it's the so server will close the socket and the socket will tell us by firing this event that, that the socket's been closed. And then finally, for the on message event, this is when we get any messages coming from the server. So inside here, the first thing we can do again is just log out this message to the server. This helps us with debugging. So we can log out that we have a message. And to here we can say message.data. So any data that comes back from the, from the server. We'll take a look at the, fo the format of these messages in a moment. We also in here then want to add that message. So again, if we're inside here and we type in some text and hit enter, we want the message to appear in here. To do that, again, we'll use jQuery. We'll have some code which looks something like this. So echo back is the ID of the div inside the browser, inside the browser. And we just set as text value to whatever the message we have back from this thing. So we have one more thing to do, which is to implement send message some standard jQuery stuff to this, which is this code. So here we grab a reference to the echo element on the page. We get the value of that element that becomes the message. We check that it's not empty. And then once we send the message, which we haven't added yet, we reset the echo back to an empty string so that on the page, the page goes back to its default state. Once we have that, we can now send the message. And we do that by doing echo.socket, which is the socket we had, dot send. And we simply send up the value of the message. So here we send the message. And here we receive any messages that come from the server. Remember that these two events are independent. So there's no RPC mechanism here. There's no request response protocol. It's purely message based. So once we have that, load the page and run the application. So we get the connection open message. And if I go into here and enter a message and hit return. Oh, the on message function. We need to add a parameter here, which is the message coming back in. So if I redeploy, Go back to the browser, refresh, and say hello. And sure enough, we now have the data. And no errors in the console. Just to go a little more deeply into this, I'd like to walk through one particular part of the code. So in the sources inside the browser, I've added a breakpoint insight on message. Remember that when we enter a message here, and hit enter, that message is sent to the server and the server immediately echoes that message back to us. So when I hit enter here, we break into the message. And if we look at the message object that's sent back to us here, if I go and add a watch expression and say message, it's actually of type message event. And the message event looks like this. So inside here, we actually have the data and that's the message that comes back to us. And this was the text that we sent, so we had annotated and then the actual message itself. We have things like the origin information, we have the element where it came from, so WebSocket, we have bubble, inf it's an event, so we have event type information here. But the part that we care about at the moment is just this, the data.